A senior Christian cleric in Lebanon has called for Syrian refugees to be deported from the country. Patriarch Bechara Butris Al Rai, who heads the Maronite Church, made the sale in his Easter service message. He said Syrian refugees thought to number as many as 1.5 million were draining the state's resources. An independent monitoring group, the Syrian Network for Human Rights, accused him of using inflammatory speech against vulnerable people. Lebanon has been crippled by long-running political and economic crisis. The value of its currency has plummeted, leaving hundreds of thousands living in poverty, with many struggling to afford food and medicine. The UN has registered more than 8,20,000 Syrian refugees in Lebanon, but says there could be around 1.5 million. They fled their country's bloody 12-year civil war. Lebanon's population is estimated to be just under 7 million. In his Easter service message, Patriarch Becher claimed that Syrian refugees were disturbing social security and competing with the Lebanese for their livelihood. He accused the international community of protecting Syrian refugees and deciding to ignore the repercussions they have on Lebanon's. He urged the international community to help return them to their homeland and help them there. Patriarch Bechara, head of the largest Christian denomination in Lebanon, has also called for the removal of Palestinian refugees in the past. The director of the Syrian Network of Human Rights, Pedal Abdel Ghani, told the RB21 news outlet that Syrian refugees in Lebanon received international aid rather than Lebanese government subsidies. The UN and Human Rights Group have previously warned that Syria is not safe for refugees to return to and last year opposed Lebanese government plans to start returning refugees. الحياة فيها الناس اللي فيها قديش هم طيبين كلياتنا منخاف على بعض لا بحكيهم كتير يعني لما تيجوا على المخيم يعني إحنا كبرنا فيه تعودنا عليه ما عاد قدرنا نطلع منه يعني يا سلام يقول تروح سوريا يقول لها لا لأنه نحن بينا هون ما عاد ما عاد تقدر نروح إيش يعني بدنا نطلع نشتغل نكبر بس بس نروح على أمي ده نصرف عليه Ex-US President Donald Trump is suing his former lawyer for $500 million, alleging breach of contract. He says Michael Cohen breached his duty as attorney to act in his client's best interests. The lawsuit comes aimed escalating attacks from Trump allies on Cohen, who is a key witness in a New York investigation into the ex-president. A Manhattan prosecutor last week charged Mr. Trump with fraud in relation to harsh money payments to a porn star. Cohen's spokesman and lawyer, Lenny Davis, told the BBC he was confident that the lawsuit against his client would fail. The legal action failed in a Florida federal court also accuses Cohen of making improper, self-serving and malicious statements about his former client his family members, and his business. Cohen worked as Mr. Trump's attorney for over a decade. He was also vice president at the Trump Organization and was often described as Mr. Trump's fixer. But the two had a major falling out after the 2016 election as investigators began looking into several of Mr. Trump's asides. In 2018, Cohen was sentenced to the three years in prison and a fine after pleading guilty to charges of fraud and campaigning finance violations. Now out of prison, Cohen has become a high-profit critic of Mr. Trump and a frequent guest on news programs. He has written a book and hosts a podcast, both of which Mr. Trump cites in the lawsuits. It says Cohen fabricated conversations and wrongfully called Mr. Trump a racist 
in his 2020 book Disloyal. Cohen's lawyer, Mr. Davis, said in a statement to the BBC, Mr. Trump appears once again to be using and abusing the judicial system as a form of harassment and intimidation against Michael Cohen. It appears he is terrified by his looming legal perils and is attempting to send a message to other potential witnesses who are cooperating with prosecutors against him. New York prosecutors have charged Mr. Trump with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in what they say was an effort to cover up payments intended to keep a porn star Stormy Daniels quiet about her alleged affair with him. On 4 April, Mr. Trump appeared in Manhattan Criminal Court, the first former U.S. president ever indicted on criminal charges. He pleaded not guilty. Cohen has admitted that as Trump's fixer, he facilitated a $1,30,000 payout to Mr. Daniels. As Mr. Trump's court date approached, Cohen made numerous appearances on major network news programs and criticized his former boss. He is not thick-skinned, Cohen told the reporters after Mr. Trump's indictment. He is actually very thin-skinned and he has a very fragile ego. Ghana is the first country to approve a new malaria vaccine that has been described as a world changer by the scientists who developed it. The vaccine called R21 appears to be hugely effective in stark contrast to previous venture in the same field. Ghana's drug regulators have accessed the final trial data on the vaccine's safety and effectiveness, which is not yet public and have decided to use it. The World Health Organization is also considering approving the vaccine. Malaria kills about 6,20,000 people each year, most of them young children. It has been a massive, century-long scientific undertaken to develop a vaccine that protects the body from the malaria parasite. Trial data from preliminary studies in Burkina Faso showed the R21 vaccine was up to 80% effective when given as three initial doses and a booster a year later. But widespread use of vaccine hinges on the results of larger trial involving nearly 5,000 children. These had been expected to take place at the end of last year but have still not been formally published. However, they have been shared with some government bodies in Africa and scientists. Ghana's Food and Drug Authority, which has seen the data, has approved the vaccine's use in children aged between 5 months to 3 years old. Other African countries are also studying the data, as is the World Health Organization. Proof Adrian Hill, director of Jena Institute at the University of Oxford, where the vaccine was invented, says African countries are declaring. We will decide after being left behind in the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines during the pandemic. He told that we expect R21 to make a major impact on malaria mortality in children in the coming years and in the longer term will contribute to overall final goal of malaria eradicating and eliminations. The Serum Institute of India is preparing to produce between 100 to 200 million doses per year, with a vaccine factory being constructed in Accra, Ghana. Each dose of R21 is expected to cost a couple of dollars. Adh Punawala, CEO of Serum Institute, said, Developing a vaccine to greatly impact this huge disease burden has been extraordinarily difficult. He also added that the Ghana, as the first country to approve the vaccine, represents a significant milestone in our efforts to combat malaria around the world. Sleeping at the hospital because of malaria. 
But now that for this my son there, he's okay with everything. So I thank the nurses that they inject them for the malaria vaccine. to come and help us immunize the children to gain immunity again.